Throughout the years of the Third Age, the Valar grew increasingly concerned Sauron might still pose a threat, as his life force was connected to the One Ring of Power, which was lost but never destroyed. Although elves, men, and dwarves were able to unite and defeat the Dark Lord during the Second Age, most believed the threat was gone and so would be unprepared for his return. When the Valar first descended from the Timeless Halls, they took mastery over the world, shaping it as they desired in preparation for the awakening of the children, unique and intelligent beings created by Eru Iluvatar. When the first Dark Lord waged his wars, poisoning their labors and threatening the children, the Valar felt compelled to offer their protection, marching their armies to war. Yet they soon realized that direct interference resulted in drastic repercussions felt all across the world. Though their strength was indeed sufficient to defeat and destroy the first Dark Lord Melkor, it also led to the reshaping of continents, causing countless deaths and mass devastation. Since Sauron was nowhere near as powerful as his master Melkor, and had already been defeated by the children on their own, the Valar felt it unwise to involve themselves directly and instead created the Astadi, a team of five Maiar in the form of elderly wizards, tasked with organizing and preparing Middle-earth for their war against the second Dark Lord. Knowing that Sauron was once a faithful Maya just like the Astari, the Valar understood the temptations awaiting them, as they would be surrounded by beings incapable of magic, and so could easily use their powers to make themselves kings. Increasing this threat even more was the possibility that an Astari might come to possess the One Ring and succumb to its corruption, becoming yet another Dark Lord seeking the conquest of Middle-earth. In order to minimize this threat, the Valar forbid the Astari from overt use of their powers or facing the Dark Lord directly and had them take the form of elderly men so they could speak to elves, humans, and dwarves as equals. Arriving around the year 1000, the Blue Wizards Alatar and Palando took charge over the east of Middle-earth, joined briefly by the White Wizard and leader of their order, Saruman, who then returned west where he worked with Gandalf the Grey to foster and maintain alliances. Gandalf was the wisest and most powerful of the Astari, but also the most humble and mild-mannered, learning compassion from the Vala Niena, Lady of Mercy. In order to prepare for their mission, Gandalf spent centuries wandering around Middle-earth, getting to know its people, and in doing so learned about their history and politics, making many friends and contacts, which later proved crucial for victory. The final wizard Radagast the Brown was sent on behalf of the Vala Yavanna and so dedicated himself to the preservation of wildlife, only participating in the affairs of his colleagues when absolutely necessary. As the decades went on and the Astari spread throughout Middle-earth, a strange evil took possession of Amon Lank, forcing the Wood Elves to relocate further north where they built Elven King's Hall. Renamed Dol Guldur, the former elven stronghold came to be ruled by a being called the Necromancer, whose corruption spread throughout the Greenwood, henceforth named Mirkwood. Though no one knew it at the time, the Necromancer was Sauron, who needed a base of operations to assemble his servants and send them on missions to weaken their enemies wherever possible. Fearing the evil spreading throughout the forest, many of those living in the area migrated away, like the Harfoot clan of the Hobbit people who left the Valley of the Anduin to cross the mountains and settle in Eriador. As the centuries went on, they were joined by other Hobbit clans like the Fallowhides and Stewers, with most eventually settling in and around the Shire. Meanwhile, in the lands of men, the Dúnedain at last achieved a lasting victory against the Haradrim of the south, when King Kiriaher emerged from Umbar and led his forces to conquer their last great enemy, bringing Gondor to the height of its power and peak of their golden age. Renamed Hirmendakil, meaning South Victor, the last of the great ship kings ruled until his death in 1149 and was succeeded by his son, Atanatar II, a man who cared nothing for the administration of the realm and spent his life delighting in the power and wealth he inherited. Due to his neglect, the Golden Age of Gondor soon came to an end and their influence slowly began to diminish. Much like Atanatar II, his son and heir, Narmakil, had no interest in ruling over the realm. However, they were fortunate to have his nephew, Minalkar, a promising administrator and military commander who was named regent and given charge over the kingdom. Learning of a rebellion in the east, Minalkar worked with the Northmen tribes of Rovanian, living in and around the Greenwood Forest to put it down. After defeating the Easterlings, Minalkar changed his name to Romendakil and returned home, having made a number of new friendships and alliances with the men of the north. Two years later, in 1250 TA, the regent sent his son Valakar as an ambassador to live under Vidugavia, the self-titled King of Rovanian, leader of their largest tribe. 
When King Narmakil died childless decades later in 1294, his younger brother Kalmakil inherited the throne, but was too old for the position, and so left his son Romendakil as regent, until he too passed away in 1304. Though he had been ruling Gondor for over 50 years, Romendakil at last inherited the title of king, which he held until his death in 1366. Although the Dúnedain of Gondor were emerging from a golden age of prosperity, their kin in Arnor were not faring as well, having divided into three realms, constantly at war. Taking advantage of this vulnerability, a being known as the Witch King of Angmar established himself in the fortress of Karn Doom, gathering an army of orcs and hillmen, all the while using spies and informants to keep Arnor divided. Though many feared the threat he posed, none knew he was the leader of the Nazgul and the Lieutenant of Sauron, who disappeared for over a thousand years after the Wars of the Second Age. Now settled in Dol Guldur, Sauron began his long-term strategy of weakening the Dúnedain in anticipation of his return to power. The Witch King, therefore, established himself in the north, with the goal of utterly destroying the realms of Arnor. When King Argaleb inherited the rule of Arthedain, there was a brief hope that peace might follow, as the royal lines of Cardolan and Rudaur were no more, meaning he was the last descendant of Isildur, with a claim over the entire kingdom. Yet while Cardolan recognized this reality and accepted his rule, Rudaur was led by servants of the Witch King, who refused and pledged themselves allies of Angmar. Sending their combined forces to face the armies of Arthedain in the Battle of the Weather Hills, the Witch King achieved a great victory, killing King Argaleb. However, his son and heir, Arvaleg, continued the struggle, gaining reinforcements from Cardolan and their elven allies in Lindon to push back the enemy and retake the Weather Hills. Forming a defensive line in case of another attack, the Witch King momentarily halted his advance south and moved east, laying siege to Rivendell in the hopes of crushing this ally of his enemy before they could join in the war effort. Although the elves emerged victorious when Lord Elrond brought reinforcements from Lothlorien to help lift the siege, the Witch King's larger strategy succeeded as he distracted the elves and prevented them from sending aid to Arnor. With the Eastern Elves busy fighting in Rivendell, the Witch King next sought to eliminate Arthedain's greatest ally, and so sent an army against the frontline forces at Amon Sul in 1409, while another host attacked Cardolan directly. Achieving another great victory, the forces of Angmar succeeded in killing both the Prince of Cardolan and King Arvaleg of Arthedain, in addition to capturing Amon Sul, pushing towards Fornost, occupying Rudaur, and conquering all of Cardolan, save for the capital city of Tirngorthad. Yet this was as far as the Witch King's forces could extend, and they soon faced the Elves of Lindon, who joined young King Arafor of Arthedain in a counter-offensive, pushing back the enemy at Fornost and liberating Amon Sul. Lord Elrond then arranged for more reinforcements from Lothlorien, which combined with those from Lindon to attack Angmar and strike a blow so devastating it took centuries to recover. Though they survived the invasion, Arnor was a shadow of their former selves, with Rudaur gone and Cardolan on the verge of collapse. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Edric Nordian, High Prince of Augustria and Commander of the Golden Legion, Fred Heartless, Knight of Iron and Ice, Sir Jeremiah Ironside of House Kamsia, Protector of Sword and Spear, and Chris Walder, the Crimson Shadow, Master of the Dark Arts. If you'd like to help the channel, go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can sign up and gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and access the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.